Marcus Garvey, message to the people. Lesson 10, the economy. There are several kinds of economy, but this subject specifically deals with the financial economy. Economy is based on good and sane judgment. The practice of it is that you must always be on the safe side of your bargains or your dealings. Never exhaust yourself, always have a reserve. There should always be something left over that you may fall back on in a time of need. Money is the prop of life. It is that it pays all the necessities and offers security for all opportunities. In earning money, one should never spend as much as he earns. That is bad business. Whatever his earning capacity, he should always be thrifty enough to save 15 to 20 percent of his income, storing it up to make better opportunities when they come and providing for a rainy day. If you spend all that you earn, you're on the edge of bankruptcy at all time. If you spend more than you earn, you're not only a fool, but you're a very dishonest person, and you are bound to suffer without any chances. Therefore, always make it a public policy to save money out of your earnings, never mind how small it is. If you have better commercial ideas than the present job calls for, and your present numeration warrants that you have to save out of your personal earnings to take advantage of the opportunity to improve yourself within a reasonable time and achieve these ideas. Never engage yourself in living luxuries when you can only live ordinary. Ultimately, you are doomed and bound to fail and be the lavish stock of your friends in the community, but not being able to keep up with your luxurious standard of living for on a limited purpose. Never buy anything more than money than you have or possibly expect to have within a time limited for the purchase. Never give away money that you cannot spare. Never give anything of value that cannot be turned into money except when you can spare it. Never borrow on interest from anybody. If you can, within a reasonable time, pay your debts. If you pay your own debts with your own money, you save the interest for yourself that you pay to others. The moment you start paying interest to others on money borrowed, you become a, work, a slave working for somebody else. It is better to wait till you have money for yourself to do your thing before you borrow it or purchase that and pay on interest of it. At the same time, you must use good judgment to find out whether it's to your advantage to seek opportunities of doing something big with somebody else's money, even when interest to be paid. You must decide if that particular business will possibly bring enough to meet the interest that in giving you sufficiently properly to, to justify, and taking a risk and assuming responsibility of paying interest of others may be of value. The moment you are loaning money on interest to do anything, the person loaning you money must be credited as wise enough to know beforehand that if the money can be made out of a thing or an investment, that is only the interest. If that is so, then it's likely that he himself will go into business and not give you a chance to go in with his money. He may be a friend or want to help you, but few money lenders are friends. They are lending for usury and have no souls. At least their souls are bad. So be careful in borrowing money and going into business. It is better you save and wait until you be able to go into business on your own account before taking a risk. It is bad business going to any business without enough capital to run that business. 99 cases out of 100 will fail. Also considering that you will always go into something, anything, and figuring out the cost to be sure there is a margin of profit before you do anything. Otherwise, it's not worthwhile doing. If you're going to address a medium 100 miles away and count on the cost of the railroad fare and the transportation to and fro, the cost of the meeting, your living expenses are going and to stay at the meeting and regulating and returning from the meeting, the percentage to pay those who you are looking after the meeting and are possibly getting a large crowd enough to meet these all expenses will leave you with a profit of at least 25%. If there's no profit in it, you're taking a risk, and when you're finished, you'll be sorry you went. Always work out beforehand the possible financial results of every transaction, and be sure the usual arrangements are such as to bring profit to the end. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. As far as the UNIA is concerned, you should calculate for profit for every association and everything you do. Profit comes in many ways to the association. For instance, if you go to an address meeting, 100 miles, profit will come by new members joining the association and the establishing agency there. For the association, leave behind the sentiments of associations may be an advantage for any money you receive for the expenses of the meeting. As long as you are converted to attach someone up permanently to the UNIA, it may be always considered profit. Always seek to get some profit, otherwise your work is a failure. When you work to be judged, you will find a balance sheet on how much you receive and how much you distribute as a representative of the association and how much you had net and you have returned it to the movement and how much you have morally helped the movement will be called. 
If your balance sheet shows that for one month, three months, six months, or a year, and you have not added anything to the net association, your importance is nil, and you will not count for much. Your status will be far below others who have made it more valuable to the movement. A president or representative who can show that in a year he or she has turned over 500, 1,000, or 10,000 net to the association occupies a position of eminence. That's called for the greatest recognition of the service rendered. Other presidents and representatives may occupy no such position of recognition because of his failure. Men and women are promoted on their record. Their record must be profitable. If their record is that of failure, and that remains until they can provide proof otherwise, there is no other standard by which you can judge the ability of a man. Always seek to get a substantial value for their work, because you will never be able to recall them as long as they move along. Whenever they, you want to sell anything, unless you meet somebody who is badly in need of that thing, you are always going to be offered less than value for the thing. So never buy for us, Bill, unless you have it at a loss. It is better to buy things on cash or on short term than write a long term. Long term purchases carry a great percentage of interest on the purchases. Something that you purchase on terms can be brought almost in half the price if brought for cash because people are anxious to sell for cash even though they make a sacrifice for the living. Even though they, because they all want cash. When you buy on terms, you must buy the burden, not the seller. When you buy on cash, the seller bears the burden and a great loss to get cash. Always have cash and bargains. It will show up. It will always show up. If you have no cash, you will see bargains and want them and pay twice the price for them. When you, have, when you buy on their terms. Never live above your income. Never live to your income. Never assume responsibility that you are not prepared for it and it will burden you down. Never marry broke. Never marry before you are ready. Never allow anyone to force you to do anything against your will. If you can see a thing and get good results from a cheaper price, don't pay the dearer price except when you have the money to throw it away. Do not lose your head in thinking that someone's going to run away, run away. Therefore, you must grab it now. Because that attitude, you may find yourself being a big fool because you have grabbed it here. Thinking and wondering, you may have thrown away next door and not worth anything. Always look around first. And when you're in doubt, try to duplicate. Try to find a duplicate. You may come back to the first. But if anything in that neighborhood is with one person, it's more likely a similar thing and it's also in the same neighborhood. Search the neighborhood before you decide to lay out all your money on one thing. Never think that one thing or one person in the peach town is the only peach in town. There are better peaches on the tree. Desire to try to curb your weakness for being a super thrift spender. Every time you attempt to spend 10 cents on a dollar on a frivolous thing, you will not get direct profit or return from it. Hold your hand, count to 10 before you do anything and say to yourself, have I any pressing needs or use for this money for better than this frivolous thing? Therefore, you will always keep your money in your pocket. Never give your money outside your race. If you're called upon God to give it, ask yourself if God really going to get it. The only thing you feel to go into this channel that God is really appreciative of himself and you should get it. Because God doesn't want the money because of the good cause of his name, he may need it. But you should really find out if there's really any, any cause. To send a man touring around the country, the world in God's name for his own pleasure is not giving it to God. To give a man worldly, more worldly goods than he already is not giving is, already is not giving to God. To help carry on social service work in a community or help the poor of the community or rescue children community in the community is giving to God. Be more clear of giving to God because it must be used for a good cause and near cause to you and that's the cause of your own race. Never fail to give charity where charity is needed within your own race. But do not allow it to be tricked. It's a good old thing. It's good. Don't buy a new one. Don't allow fashion. Don't follow fashion for fashion's sakes. Follow your judgment on intelligence sakes. There is nothing wrong with your suits of clothes. Don't buy another one because someone else has done. All it may need is attention with everything. You may need badly the money later on. So spend it to buy thrift on a new suit. All right. And your ambition to be great, to be greater than you than you and your others, don't mean so mentally. Practice rigid thrift in your present position and save as much as you can so that in a given period, you'll be able to change your position and reach your objective. Never consume all that you have. It cannot be done. Never swim all that you can have and expect to climb higher. It can never be done. Never go into business you know nothing about. No fool can make success out of anything and therefore know your business before you go into it. And never live off the capital of your business.
keep out of court as much as you can. And if possible, never go there to do accept social work, social service work to help others. Never be charged with a crime or be on trial. This is, this affects association and affects you. Always try to settle racial disputes without going to the law. The law is expensive and uncertain. When you go to the law too often, you establish a bad record than something that nobody wants to deal with. Keep away as a defendant. Always counsel Negroes not to be anxious to start litigation and prosecution of each other if it can be avoided. Going into court gives the race a bad name and causes the government to think badly of the race. Always keep good of your work before the government and make the government aware of it, particularly social service, charitable work, education work. This does not mean racial education. Your racial education is private like the Jews. Make the government aware of public education and attending good citizenship. It should be preeminent and brought to the attention of the government. So that was lesson 10. That was the end of lesson 10. Um, Marcus Garvey on the economy. And you know, how to, how to run the economy and how to do things. Um, like you said, the racial education is private. You know what I'm saying? Which, the, which other races do. They don't have it out there public like, you know, like that. They do it private. You know what I'm saying? So you can teach the real gritty gritty stuff. We got to get back to that. That's why I say forum study groups. You know what I'm saying? Um, never join other groups. Always take care of your race first. You know what I'm saying? But also, he said, don't be a fool either. You know what I'm saying? So, there's some stuff we need to grow on, some stuff that's not really taught to our children. You know, curb your weakness, you know, curb your weakness to spend. You know, I was I get into a guy today. He's talking about, we the most consumers, and you know, woo, woo, woo. But then when I bring out 400 black businesses, you know, oh, that's fake, that's phony. But you'd rather be a spender, you know what I'm saying? You'd rather be a hype, a fiend. And this is the kind of thing they got us on the economy, too. You know what I'm saying? We start reinvesting in ourselves, we're going to blow it up. Anyway, subscribe to the channel. Much love to you and yours. More videos to come. Peace.